everybody, Prowl here. Welcome to another episode of Bedrock in Minecraft. Uh, you'll see in my hand today is a furnace uh, because today's episode is going to be a super smelter. Um, this is going to be a one in three part episode uh, that I should be releasing one um, each week. Uh, this one will come out on Tuesday and then um, next the next Tuesday we will have a uh, bamboo farm. And then the Tuesday after that, if all goes according to plan, I will marry the bamboo farm together with this super smelter. Um, that being said, let's go ahead and let's take a look at how this thing is going to work. First thing we're going to do here is throw some fuel into the system. Um, the first thing you're going to notice here is this thing automatically kicks on whenever you put something in it. So give it one second. There we go. It's traveled through the uh, item elevator and is now being input into the system. You'll see uh, a lot of these furnaces or they get uh, two fuel uh, pieces of fuel each. Um, what this is going to mean for you guys is this will not work right now with bamboo. Um, it's going to be good for pretty much any other fuel source that lasts a long time including coal. Um, so just don't don't put bamboo in here. It's not going to put enough bamboo in each furnace for the furnace to burn the uh, bamboo off and smelt the item. Uh, now that we've got enough fuel in there to get started, let's go ahead and let's throw in our smeltable items. What you're going to see is this thing should pause or skip for a moment and it's going to kick in gear. There we go. Um, what that's doing there is it just switched over from the automatic input coming in from here to it coming in here. Uh, it just takes a few moments as it gets into gear, uh, but now it is it is going. Like I said, it just skips a few times at first and now it is consistently going. Um, so a lot of you probably know what's doing this and maybe some of you don't, but what we got here is a piston feed tape with furnaces. Um, something that you cannot do in the Java edition of the game, but you can do in Bedrock. This is one of the things that makes Bedrock better. And I know I'm gonna get a lot of hate for that comment and <laughs> rightfully so probably, but um, this is why I play Bedrock, I guess. Uh, you know, there's a lot of fun things in here that you cannot do in Java, although there's a lot of things in Java that are definitely a lot better as well. Um, so now that you guys have seen this working and we have some items that have been smelted, if I pop down in here to the output section, uh, I just got two chests in here. Obviously, you can do as many as you want. You see, we got these smeltable items popping in here right now, uh, coming in pretty quick. And um, this array is 23 furnaces. Um, so let's go ahead and let's jump and look at the back of this thing before we go to build it. All right, so here's the back of it in action. Uh, we will build this one section at a time. This is not going to be one of those kind of build with me while I go type of videos. Um, it is going to be more of a, I'm going to build this thing in segments um, and uh, we will show you guys each segment as I do it. So um, you'll see here, um, our items are coming in through here. Uh, they are being shot up by a dropper. Uh, going into the input right here that is inputting into each furnace as they go around. Um, this is firing or allowing a clock right here to go off. Um, so this is a hopper clock. Whenever there is an item traveling through this input right here, it powers this little chain here, turns this guy off right here instead of being on. Again, we'll we'll do that when we get over there. And then that turns the power off to this hopper. If there were nothing in this hopper, this would be off, this would be on, this would be on, and this hopper would be locked. This item would not be traveling back and forth. And it's this uh, hopper clock that is powering this whole thing. You see as it fires off, it's firing the pistons. And then we have uh, the pistons uh, feed tape uh, set to go off with a uh, delay between each one. And I will go over what those are in a moment as well. Um, this is the fuel input right here. This is a uh, silent whispers um, item, item elevator. I've used this multiple times. I think uh, maybe once or twice in some tutorials. I've used it in single player worlds as well. Um, I'm not going to go over how to build it. Um, if you want to see that, just jump over to silent whispers video on his um, item elevator. Um, but the fuel source is coming up this uh, drop evader there and goes into this chest and then goes into this uh, hopper right here. Uh, the reason it is going into a chest first is just so this thing doesn't get backed up because if uh, you throw too much fuel in here, all the furnaces get full and this hopper gets full, 
um, then you're going to get your item elevator is going to get backed up and then you'll have to come back here and manually em empty the items out of it if it gets too full. So um, this chest just kind of helps the um, elevator from getting backed up. And then the output is down here in this kind of spaghetti of a mesh right here. Um, you'll see it going down right here. Um, so I got numerous hoppers just collecting items as this thing goes around and fills in right there. Um, not only does this system automatically turn on whenever you put items in here or in here, it stays on until no more items are passing through the uh, hoppers. So as long as there's still items in the um, furnaces here, it is still going to go. Every once in a while you might catch an item that uh, a couple items that doesn't get smelted, uh, but the next time you fire it up they will. So um, it's pretty efficient. I just wanted to make this thing as... Um, maintenance free as possible so it does everything on its own that's what a lot of this redstone down here is doing and we will go over that once we get this thing built uh, but let's go ahead we're going to jump over there to the first section and uh, go over how to get this thing going and just to show you guys in that couple minutes that we just went over all that right there uh, we filled up almost a whole row of uh, items in the um in the output here so i don't know how long that was two three four minutes something around there uh we got a lot of items in that amount of time all right, so first things first is actually getting these things set up. So um, what we have are 23 furnaces here. Um, so you'll do one row of 12 and then one row of 11 furnaces. And um, you'll want to establish your ground level as one um, block below the furnaces, meaning that we have this little decorative block right here. You put whatever you want there, cover the whole thing up, whatever you want to do. But um, if you're going to have this thing where you want to present it and be able to look at it, then uh, set your ground level um, one block below where all the furnaces are. Okay, so jump over to the back side here. Uh, what I've shown you guys is the, first of all, let's go over the timing for everything. So we're going to call this guy right here Piston 1, and let me just grab some redstone, even though I don't really need it right now. Um, so Piston 1 will not have any delay to it. You do not want a repeater, you're going to run redstone straight into it. Piston 2 is going to have a 2 tick delay. Piston 3 will have a 4 tick delay. And Piston 4 will have a 6 tick delay. Um, so you'll see here we got 0, 2, 4, 6. A 2 tick interval between the uh, furnaces has been what I found works the best to keep this thing going without getting jammed up. Okay, and then um, you will want two blocks coming out of uh, where this piston is. So one, two, and on this side, two, one, two, and then three on this side, three and three. And also I laid out uh, where a lot of our hoppers are going to go. So you're going to want to do that part next. Um, this right here is our input hopper. Um, this right here is our hopper clock. This right here is our fuel hopper. And then these right here are our output hoppers that are going into where our chests are going to eventually go. And actually, we want to lower this one more. Yeah, so that one will come down there. So if you just take a look here at where everything is placed, if you have it set up the same way I do right now, three furnaces in is your input. And then from the bottom, one, two, three, four, five, six furnaces in is your hopper clock, one below the furnaces, and one out from the furnaces, not directly under them. And then up diagonally from there is your fuel input. And then your output just starts here at the last furnace in the line. And um, I have one, two, three, four, five uh, hoppers pulling st stuff out from the furnaces. It's funny, I threw a ladder in there somehow. Um, so, um, five hoppers there, they'll come down one, two, three hoppers. And then this is where they're going to input into our chest. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and next we are going to build all of the, um, circuitry to actually have this thing moving the furnaces around. So I'm going to do that and then we'll show that off. So I got all the redstone run. So let's take a look at this thing. So first of all, we're going to start from the middle. Um, you're going to put a comparator coming out of your 
um, hopper that's right here for your hopper clock. Uh, compare it out to one piece of redstone. Repeater this way, repeater this way. That way we have full signal strength going out in both directions. And then um, from this repeater, we'll go out one, two, three, four blocks. Go up one, over, and up one in this direction, and you should be connected to piston number two. Okay? And then where you have these two iron blocks, or these two uh, blocks here, um, you will go down also to piston number one. So you should see how that is run. Remember, this guy is at two ticks. Okay? And then over here, you're going to go over just pretty much straight across to piston number four. So going over from this uh, repeater, one, two, three, four, five, and then up one. And then that has you connected with piston number four there. And then also, once you go over one, two, three, we're going to stair step up. So you're going to go over from block number three there. You're going to go up one, up two, and then turn in towards your um, repeater here for piston number three, and then go over and connect to him. So just to give you guys a view one more time of how that is laid out. And that is all the redstone run. So um, when you throw an item in here, I have one in now, but I just stopped it with this piece of uh, with this redstone block. You'll see that once I get rid of that and the hopper clock is activated, this is what you should see. Whenever there's an item in the hopper clock, you should have all of the uh, furnaces running. And if you stare at this thing too long, it's probably going to put you in a trance because it is quite cool, I do believe. All right, so we're going to go ahead and stop that. Let me pull this out of here so this thing doesn't fire anymore. And the next thing we're going to build is the input. So let's we're going to build the input next that brings the items into the furnaces. All right, so we have our item input built now. So uh, what you're going to want to do is you're going to punch a hole in the floor lined up with these first two furnaces here and put your chest in there. And then from the left side of that chest, you're going to hopper out one, two, three hoppers, cross and one down. And that one down is going to go into your dropper. Okay. So we got the uh, source here coming from here and going to the dropper. Uh, and then your comparator, um, maybe some of you don't know this, a comparator can read what's in a dropper um, or a hopper or whatever through a block. So I have a block here. Um, this is just to push us out a little bit further. I have a block there, comparator, an observer looking at that comparator. Um, every time a item goes into that dropper, that comparator is going to see it. The observer is going to see the uh, comparator light up. It's going to send the signal out, making a clock right here. And then this uh, observer is going to see this redstone updating. It's going to send a signal to this block, and it can power that uh, dropper through the block. Okay. Um, and then what you should see here, if we throw, here I can do it from down here, if I throw some items in there, let's just throw some sand, there we go, go ahead and take that out because we do not need that yet, and those are going to come in here, okay, and then um, of course before this thing's going to work you're going to need to uh, put your glass so you'll see here I just have a uh, uh, four rows of glass going up uh, from where that water column is so you have your uh, dropper facing into where the water is going to be and you need glass going up from all four sides of there to block your water from getting out um, you will come up to um, this uh, dropper what is this hopper sorry that's right here okay and you'll go up uh, one block higher than that hopper. Uh, you don't really need this glass up here uh, because we're not using, and I suggest you do not use soul sand. It's just no need for it. There's, it's gonna, it shoots the items up really fast and they kind of get stuck in the glass up here temporarily. It can slow down your system, so I just wouldn't do it. Um, and then you'll see where we have the water flowing into the hopper. So again, one last demonstration. So this in here, like so. see the items coming up and just flowing into the hopper there. All right, uh, next thing we're gonna make 
um, is the um, automatic on switch for when you put items into the um, input. So let's go ahead and cut away and do that now. All right, so now we have our automatic on switch here. Um, so what we're doing is we're pulling a signal out of this hopper right here. So um, right now there's nothing in the hopper, which means that this torch right here is on. It is powering this redstone, which is stopping the hopper clock. And I did show that off earlier. So what you're going to see happens is when I throw some items into, um, into this water stream right here, which I'm going to do now. I am going to do now. I'm going to not fail at it this time. <laughs> we're going to we're going to do this again. There we go. So now that is on. That is powering this block, which is powering this redstone, which is now turning that torch off, which unlocks the hopper clock and allows this thing to go. Let's go ahead and take it out of there. That way we can turn this thing off. And you will see that as this thing goes, since there is a two tick delay um, in between the furnaces going, you get two items in each one. All right, so now that we have the input done, let's go ahead and we are going to do the fuel. We're gonna do the fuel input next. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and hop away and uh, build that, and then we will show that off. So we have the fuel input done now. So um, you see we went two blocks over from our um, source input, and we have a chest here. Uh, coming out the right side of that chest, we have a hopper. We go over one hopper, and then down one, two, three. Over this way, and then down one. And this hopper is being input into our um, item elevator here. So all this is is a bunch of droppers that are facing up. And then this last one is facing over. So just so you know how high you need to go for that. If you remember, we already put in our fuel input hopper. So just go ahead and throw a double chest on top of that fuel input hopper that we had already placed down. And face an observer, I'm not an observer. A dropper into that and they run all of these other droppers straight up just like this and then that one would be facing over so that's what that tower right there looks like okay and then um, the circuitry on the bottom of this I'm gonna try to show it to you it's a little cramped have a um, whatever that guy is a comparator <laughs> Um, I get my words mixed up a lot, apparently. You have a comparator coming out of the bottom dropper, going into a solid block. On the other side of that solid block is a piece of redstone. To the right of that redstone is another solid block. So basically the power is coming through here. Now, out of that solid block comes a repeater, another piece of redstone. That's what's turning this thing into a clock. And then... On the other side here, again, there's your comparator. There's a solid block it's going through. There's another piece of redstone. This, gets, this also gets powered from that block going into this repeater. This repeater powers that block and fires that dropper. So um, from there, on each beside each of these droppers, you need a solid block. Uh, let me get back to the other side because it's easier to see from there. You're going to start getting cramped here for a lot of the rest of this build. So... Um, on each one of these, I have a solid block going all the way up to level off with my dropper there. Then you have a bunch of observers that are facing away from these blocks. So what's happening is these guys are going to be receiving power through these updates here. They're going to power this block and power this dropper. Again, if you want a really in-depth um, description of how to make this thing, go to Silent Whisperer's video. Um, but I'm showing you everything here that you need to do. So basically what's happening is we have a piece of redstone here and an observer looking down at that redstone. So when this redstone gets lit, it sees that, sends a redstone signal out. This observer is looking down, sees that redstone get lit up, and it sends a signal up to this one and this one. So all of these are receiving those updates. 
sending those out over this way and powering these droppers and moving the items up. Okay. And I believe that is, yes. Yeah, so that's going to be it for the fuel input. Next, we are going to do the item output. And from there, we are in the home stretch. And all we'll have to do after that is some of the automatic on and automatic off wiring. So let's go ahead and the output's pretty easy. I'm just going to go ahead and do that now. All right. So that just took a moment. So we just went ahead and threw a little uh, trap door right here. And we need a ladder to get up and down easily. So let's go ahead and throw a few of those guys in. That way you can run down here into your little room and grab your items that you've smelted out. Um, so just to try to show where this is. So again, we've already, we already did our hoppers that are pulling items out of the furnaces. And uh, we had already brought that system down as well. So all we've done is we've just taken that and we've run a couple hoppers into the side of these chests here that we put down and made a little room out of it. Um, I don't believe there shouldn't be much other explanation to that. Um, all you're doing is you're just pulling out of this hopper line right here and going into the couple of chests that we put down in this little corner. All right, so now we're going to get to the last part and the somewhat tricky part here of the um, automatic on and automatic off system. So the first thing we're going to build over here um, is going to be this, which is the system that keeps this whole thing going while um, we actually, you know what? Instead of building it over there, we're on the last two parts here. So let's just go over right now. So this is the exact same as what we've already built over there. Um, so you have your, man, this is so cramped. Sorry about this, guys. Um, you have your hopper line that is feeding, where is it? This one that's feeding your chest over there. Hold on. I really apologize for all this. Um, so this one, the one that's feeding your output chest, okay? So um, we, what you need to do is you need to put a block on the other side of this hopper right here, okay? You're going to put a block right here. So on the other side of this is a comparator. Um, so again, I'm going to show this off because this part's important. So um, your um, output to pull all of your smeltable items is there. You're coming down, and that's going into your chests over there. Do I need this? Get that out the way. So see here where it's going into your chest right there? So on the other side of this hopper right here, put a block. And put a block here. And put a comparator on there facing out. This comparator is detecting every time an item goes through this hopper. So as long as items are still flowing through the system, it's going to keep this thing going, okay? And then this comparator is powering this block, which is powering this redstone, going into a repeater. We'll back up here so you guys can kind of see this. Going into this repeater right here. This repeater is then powering this redstone torch, which is going into a hopper clock. This is a hopper clock right here. So just to give you guys a little bit better orientation here of where we are, repeater, redstone torch, going into this hopper clock. And then you'll see this is your redstone line that you've already built. Okay. Out of this hopper clock right here, you're going to want to come out of that with a comparator. Ignore this for now. We're going to get to that in a second. Come out from this hopper with a comparator. And then come out with two pieces of red or two pieces of or two redstone repeaters. Um, we do that because we do not want to tie into this redstone right here. So two repeaters, and then you're just stair stepping it up and hooking it back into um, the main line that's powering all of the pistons. So what this is doing is every time that there's an item passes through there, it is um, allowing um, this hopper clock to run. And it is powering this system right here. Now, if that's all we were doing, that, that would not be enough. Because what's going to happen is that would mean that while the system is running and it's still pulling in items, which was firing off the system right here, 
it would also be pulling items out of the system and firing this too. So we'd have two sets of redstone signals going into this and setting this thing off, and that would mess up all of your piston firings. So what we're going to do next is we're going to come down to where we did this, uh, our item input and our little um, clock here that was sending our items up. We're actually going to take an output from that, okay? So where you came out of the um, observer here and you made your clock, you're going to come out this way from it, go over one redstone, in one redstone, and go into a repeater and go into a block. And then here we have a standard uh, uh, pulse extender, comparator pulse extender. Um, so make your pulse extender here. If you're not familiar with those, this is how you make it. It's pretty simple. Just two comparators facing in this way, two comparators facing out that way, piece of redstone, two pieces of redstone right here. Okay. And then come out a repeater right here. So that way we have a full signal strength coming out of this guy. And then you are going to run a line up to here and into the other side of that hopper clock we made earlier. So you see where we are? So you just come two pieces of redstone out from there, go up a block, and then a piece of redstone into a uh, whatever this guy is, repeater. So what this is doing, okay, is while as long as you still have items coming into the system through the input, here, we're going to go ahead and do this right now. And just so you guys can, whoops, I want you guys to actually see what this is doing. I'm going to throw in the sand, okay? So this is going off. This has turned this on, and it has locked this clock. But also at the same time, we have items coming in through the uh, item input there, and that has turned this on. So you'll see that this is this uh, redstone torch is off. So this hopper clock would be working, and it would be sending signal into here, and that would be messing up our system. But we have this uh, pulse extender here on that is locking this. Now it's about to cut off, there it goes. So our pulse extender cut off, but we still have items actually coming into the system. So you see how this is on? It's pulling items out of the uh, furnaces still, and it's keeping this on while it still pulls items out. We don't have any new items coming in, it's just going through and it's taking items out as it goes. So that'll keep running until it's taken all of our items out, and then this will shut off, and this will be locked again. So hopefully that all made sense. If, if for some reason it didn't, I'm sorry. It's a little confusing. Maybe I'm not the best person in the world at explaining things. Um, but that's my best explanation of how this thing works and why this is important. Otherwise, again, this thing would just be firing off on both sides, this side and this side, and it's going to mess up your timings. So make sure you put this in there too. Um, and then last but not least, if we go back to our fuel input, um, this is how we keep our fuel input to keep uh, into keeping this thing going as well. So um, there's our item elevator for the fuel input. Um, if you remember here where we had all of our redstone um, for that. So you're just going to simply um, come, where is it? Yeah. So you're going to come out, and I'm using three repeaters um, just because I don't want to lock up any hoppers or anything anywhere. So just come out of your little um, item elevator here, your redstone that's right there on it, and come out one, two, three repeaters. And what that's doing is that is also tying into um, the system that was keeping our, um, our what's it called, our uh, clock, our feed tape going while we still had items coming in. So what I'm going to do, I just want to demonstrate this so you can kind of see how it's working and what it's doing. Let me get some fuel. It's the kelp blocks. Over here. That should kick in if you give it a second. So the items are coming out of here, going up our item elevator. And then as it is setting off this item elevator, what we're doing is we are uh, pulling a signal out of that.
you see everything here so it's pulling the signal out of that item elevator it is powering those repeaters are powering this block turning on this redstone which is now allowing this hopper clock to work and that hopper clock is what is powering the system into going so uh, I do believe that's it that showed off the whole thing here so uh, we have a really awesome furnace system um, I usually try to keep things kind of easy to build this one is definitely on the harder side of the things that I've made build but um, I really like to like when I make things I want to make them functional in a survival world right so it looks like this thing's finished and smelting everything um, I like everything to be functional in a survival world and um, some of these big furnace arrays that I've seen people make especially the piston feed tape ones there are other ones out there um, actually you know I'm not the I didn't invent this right I got my inspiration from um, a couple of the guys I'm going to be playing a um, survival series on here shortly with uh, foxy no tail and slack lizard um, I got inspired by them slack lizard has it in one of his uh, um, one of his uh, let's play videos and foxy has a tutorial on one and I've seen some other tutorials as well uh, but the problem with a lot of them is they don't they don't look good they're not pretty they don't fit into a build they're functional they're they're definitely great I mean the ones that they've made work really good and in some cases I mean they're probably easier to make than mine are mine is um, but I wanted mine to be um, very maintenance free and also to look good to where you can fit it into any build because at the end of the day you can hopefully build this thing in a way that hides all this stuff uh, it's a lot so hopefully you can um, don't need all that and then um, you can hide the rest of this and you can kind of have a cool build that you can make look however you want to make it look here and it, again it's super functional as well you don't have an on off switch that you have to worry about you don't have to worry about powering anything or uh, I don't know just there's there's no maintenance to it okay yeah, I think you guys get what I'm saying. You throw your stuff in, throw your stuff in, and then when it's all done, you just get it out. That's the way I like to do things. I want the I want the game to do everything for me. I don't want to have to do it myself. So yeah, that's it. I really hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, I hope this video um, helped a lot of you guys out, and um, I hope a lot of you thought this thing was pretty cool. Um, so again, I just want to thank you very much for uh, joining me here for another tutorial, and thank you very much for um watching the video guys please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel goodbye